This is part two on how I got pregnant at 12 years old and a guy I was talking to at the time was 18. So like I said earlier, he asked me if I was a virgin and I said no, even though I was because I didn't want to look like a weirdo. Kareem starts talking about how we should go on a little movie date and that he buy me popcorn and whatever I wanted from the movie theater. So Friday night comes around, I sneak out of the house and I met with Kareem down the street. He pulls me close and said that he wanted to blindfold me because he had a little surprise. I was nervous, but I trusted him, so I allowed him to blindfold me, by the way, which was the biggest mistake ever. So he grabs my hand and holds my bag. And all of a sudden, I hear people and I get picked up and I feel multiple people filling on me. This is when the night takes a turn. I'm running out of time. Please come back for part three. This is part four on how I got pregnant at 12 years old and the guy I was talking to at the time was 18. So I take off my blindfold and I'm in someone's room. I turn around and it's Kareem. I asked him what's going on and why am I there. Kareem looks at me and tells me that he brought me there for a surprise. When I look around, there's candles lit in the room and I asked him, I thought we were going to the movies. And he tells me the movies was closed down. By the way, which it was not. Now thinking, he was probably too broke to even take me to the movies. Anyways, Kareem tells me that I was being extra when I got picked up. He said he got his little brothers to transport me to his room. Thinking now it was stupid, but at the time I thought it was cute. Kareem says that he decorated the whole room to look like a movie theater. And that was a lie because his room looked like he scooped all his trash underneath his bed. And he lit up two candles. So much for the movies. But now that we're in his room, things get a little hot. Y'all let me know if I should make a part five. Hey, quick question. Do you have a problem with putting on your lashes? Like, are you one of those people that take 10 to 15 minutes just to put on one lash? What if I told you that it takes me 30 seconds tops to put on my lashes? Well, hun, have you heard of magnetic lashes? If you guys watch my videos, I've recently have been using magnetic lashes and I will forever be using magnetic lashes. After I experience this, I ain't never going back. Now, if you want to know how to apply them, I have plenty of videos of me applying them. Or you could check out my business page, which is in the caption, to watch me apply them there. But it is literally so simple. Like, it takes 30 seconds. It's, it's not much instruction, so that. <laughs> and if you're wondering, yes, I'm wearing them now. <laughs> and I'm so excited because they're launching May 3rd. The date is almost here. Story time on Tinder date from hell. So recently I got dumped by my boyfriend. I went over to my friend's house because I was feeling down and she convinced me to get a Tinder. So I immediately matched with this guy and what drew me to swipe right was because he looked like my celebrity crush. Anyways, we started talking and we exchanged phone numbers. Everything was good. I snapchatted him so he knew I was real. Over time, he would get upset when I would post my guy friends on my snap. And he say things in Spanish like, you're mine. And at the time, I thought it was cute, not realizing it was a obsessive thing. We talked just about every day until one day I got together with my friends and we went out. And remember how I told you guys that he didn't really like my friends? Well, he randomly calls me at 2 a.m. crying and claiming that he got stabbed. If you want to know what happened after that, come back for part two. Part two of Tinder Date from Hell. So, like I said earlier, I went out with my friends and he randomly calls me at 2 a.m. claiming that he got stabbed. And I, of course, thought that was crazy. I felt bad for him and wanted to be there, but I would never see him in the womb. A couple days later, he had his friends add me on Snapchat and one of his friend's girlfriends told me to get away from him and that he was obsessed with me. And all he would talk about was me. And he ain't never get stabbed. When I found that out, I wanted to leave the whole relationship alone and he went off on me. Like he went psycho crazy and told me that he was going to off himself if I ever decided to leave. And mind you guys, I barely even know this man. It gets even crazier. Come back for part three. Part three of Tinder Date from Hell. So after I found out that he tried to fake getting stabbed, I told him I was ready to leave the whole relationship and he threatened to off himself if I decided to go. After that, I couldn't deal with him anymore, so I ignored him, and he would blow up my phone. When I got tired of his craziness, I blocked his number and blocked him from all my social medias. He began starting to make fake accounts, adding me, 
couple weeks later, I saw him at a club one night and he saw me. He started walking my way and I didn't want to be rude, so I allowed him to talk to me and I kind of felt bad for kind of ghosting him, so I just entertained to be nice and hoped that all the stuff that he did in the past was just a phase. And he was really nice and he actually bought me a drink. And I really thought nothing of it until I started to feel dizzy right after drinking the drink. And I passed out. It gets worse after this. Y'all let me know if y'all want a part four. Here's another toxic best friend story time. And ladies, you're going to want to hear this one. So one day in school, I met this boy, which we're going to call Tyrone. We became friends, like really, really close friends. And over time, he asked me to be his girlfriend. And of course, I said yes. Because, you know, I already had a secret crush on him already. And, you know, everything was cute for a while, and, you know, until he started to act very distant. And I was very confused. He wouldn't give me hugs, kisses, and he wouldn't spend no time to really see me. Until randomly, his girl best friend had told me that he was cheating on me. She sent me message screenshots, but I didn't know they were fake at the time. And seeing that, I was like, up, oh, no, I'm done, and I broke up with him. For a whole year, I didn't speak to him. And weirdly, he started dating his best friend. But then we started to talk again, but just as friends. Ended up finding out that he didn't cheat on me. And his now girlfriend broke us up. Part two, I found out the FBI was watching me for seven months straight. For the first three to four months, a minivan was watching me. And when I started to catch on, they stopped showing up. But what got weird is when I got to school, every day my friends would just ask me weird questions about what I was doing, where I was going. And it was weird because I felt like I was being interrogated. After a couple months passed down, still being questioned, and I get called down to the principal's office. And I'm scared because I'm like, am I in trouble? What did I do? When I walk in, there's detectives sitting down. They then sat me down, started asking me questions. They laid out a bunch of pictures of me. And this is kind of how I found out they was watching me for so long. They asked me if my name was my real name. Am I the age of my birth certificate? Asked me if I was an immigrant. And I was so confused. And come to find out, they thought I was a mass murderer. As in like, they thought that I was the guy that was abducting women. When I told them, this wasn't me. I didn't do this stuff, man. They did some background checks. They got my family involved. My parents even wanted to sue because they didn't even know this was going on. Because at the time, I was a minor and I was getting questioned. Story time on my business lunch, May 3rd at 12 p.m., today so if you're watching this after 12 p.m today standard eastern time sis we're live but i'm so freaking excited i've literally have been talking about this all month you guys have seen it literally like i use all my products and all my videos the palettes the concealer the lip glosses the lashes the glitter to even what i'm using now which is my non-toxic all natural micellar water handmade with love <laughs> Just to let you guys know, all my products are vegan and cruelty free. And as of now, May 3rd to May 8th, all of my products are going to be on sale. Everything. On top of that, if you subscribe to the emailing list, you already know you're getting a 10% off. Did I forget to mention that I have a rewards program too? Girl, if you don't, if you don't hop on one. But the link is in my bio. I've never been so excited to say that in my life. But the link is in the bio. The link is in the bio. <laughs>